this train is full steam ahead for Tempo Storm. They needed to rebound off their last win. Right now, they've come out 2-0 over Simplicity, but Simplicity making a game of that last one on Dragonshire. Yeah, when they ended up getting the initiations on even footing and actually, you know, being able to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, it very much was, you know, Simplicity showing that why they are still, you know, one of the teams that have always been able to hold their own in HCC North America. It's just, you gotta find a way to be able to maintain that macro pressure and extend the even footing fights for longer. Let's find out what our next battleground will be here and whether Simplicity, they love first pick. Let's see if they go back to an old favorite. We know Tomb is the new favorite. Let's see, maybe the next battleground is an old favorite. It's an old favorite for them, but they're not picking it. Tempo Storm instead here is going to be the selector of Towers of Doom. Not too surprised, though, from Tempo Storm as we got their favorite off of the list with Dragonshire out the way. Towers of Doom is one of the more preferred battlegrounds, it seems like, across the board for North America. It's nobody's favorite, but everybody likes it. Everybody loves to watch it, including me. Dahaka, high contention on this battleground. I want to see the play around this. Abathur, Genji, those heroes, we've seen them start to sneak through some drafts, and this is a map where both can really excel. Neither of these teams have ever really been the solo support Abathur teams, like an Octalysis or Hero's Hearth, maybe even Method out there somewhere. Uh, but when I look at this, they're the more traditional style, and we saw some more traditional just yesterday on Towers of Doom. So I really want to see how this unfolds. I just like the fact that we have all these different battlegrounds with all these different strategies. And I look at the teams, and there's always different strategies. So it's like something new every day to experience with these teams. Yeah, no, I like it as well. And I, I can't help but feel like we got the Maya the last game. And I do think that that was part of the success here for Simplicity. So that's something I'm hoping they find a way to get their hands on here again. But with the offlane being so relevant and things like the Dahaka suddenly spiking in value, I don't know if we're going to see as high probability of her making it past those bands because the priority for the second band towards that top lane. We saw some really amazing Deckard play from Tiger JK a few weeks ago when they had the double win weekend. But he also really excels on Karazim. We have yet to see White Main in this series. When Simplicity has that level of aggression, that seems to be when they have the greatest success or the closest to success against some top teams. Do we need more of that aggression, more of the aggressive style from the support of Tiger JK to just complement a more aggressive team-oriented focus? It's it's hard to, like I guess, break it down. I mean, I think it would be cool if we ended up getting that, but I'm not sure that's the key element. Like, when I look at Simplicity as the roster, a lot of it is when they're getting the team fights that they want, it's because they picked a composition that is so all in them team fights that they're able to force it in some way, shape, or form, which is what we got, I feel like, in the last game between the Tyrael, uh, the Maiev, and the seven sided strike coming through. They, I feel like they have to find ways to be able to draft that team fight, but then still somewhere in the roster have that here's our macro, here is our wave clear, so that they can actually get those fights. Because it's ha what happens is they go even and they maybe struggle a little bit, and then all of a sudden it's like, and now the entire <laughs> battleground is against them. How do we recover from this? So two all in on one end, maybe not a good thing yeah. for them. Yeah, I think that's it. I am curious. Simplicity, it's very important for them, no matter what, to pick up game wins. That's the number one thing. Even if they can't complete the reverse sweep in this and they can't stop that locomotive, it might be a matter of we just need those wins to stay out of that. With LFM's performance, as you and I noted earlier, they are getting closer to potentially getting out of that number seven spot. Very keen eye for LFM to be watching the rest of the way for Simplicity Games as we're going to get our draft started here. Sergeant Hammer unlikely to be let through unless Simplicity is willing to kick it back to part one of phase two, maybe first pick that hero. Interesting to see if they let it go through, especially with how controlling the bands have been towards the Warriors uh, throughout this series, especially when looking at game number one and the hammer making it through, even with the Warrior choke coming off the side. That's been wild. The Murden banned two games in a row. And, and we're the back Diablo at it. still banned out by Simplicity. I think Tempo has gotten the upper hand in all cases of this so far, though. So with that, I feel like Simplicity may be the one wanting to reconsider here as Tempo goes with the Medivh ban. If there is no Sergeant Hammer ban here, it seems that Simplicity would go down that route, but they won't. Will the Maiev make it? Or the Murden? Or At this the point, fool me twice. 
Surely not fool me again. Murden's banned this time. I promise he won't be an option to the you, draft. Are going you going to remember that? That he's it, now that we've made it to the third one. Heck no. I think my F is there. I really feel like Tempo should pick the Murden here. You know what? I'm I think sorry. That they was, should. I they should. It, Except it's banned this time. Yeah. So they're going Genji, and an Abather. No Decker. No Decker pick up there. But if you get the Genji and the Abather on Towers of Doom. You have not only a extremely powerful composition, you have a lot of diversity, some ways that you can play the leaning phase as well. Uh, I look at this and I already go, Tempo has so much going for them that simplicity needs to find, you know that macro element I was talking about before, they need it now. Otherwise, the Abathur, not only the team fight pressure it provides with the Genji, but how much extra soak it's gonna get for them. They go with the Dahaka Tyrael once more. No more Garrosh, seemingly. As Murden gets taken away, we're now really old school meta with the Tyrael Murden ban pick. I said that Tempo Storm is not a solo ABBA support team, and it, it, it very much likely is not. Yeah. But one of the heroes that you could run that with is the Genji. I always point out the three things you have to have or some type of self-survivability and mobility for the rest of the heroes around that. Genji deflect, and he has some mobility, I hear. Just a little bit. So it would have to be the next two picks. We don't have a Deckard anywhere on, in the drafts so far. It's Karazim banned out by Tempo Storm. I feel like the Deckard ban might come in for simplicity, just because of that Karazim. Instead of the Maltail, Really curious choice there to not want to have the Malthel pressure in the off lane. I think that's going to be mainly because the Abathur pickup, they're afraid from it being a super mismatch laning setup for Glong having an Abathur hat consistently. But when you're talking about that individual sustain, something like a Blaze in that off lane also can still provide that. It's just not as oppressive as a lane with the Abathur hat. Still the Arthas and then the Malfurion here for Tempo. Something they were willing to ban out in the last draft. Arthas seems to be the answer towards this style. You mentioned an old school counter, maybe a soft counter towards Tyrion. Has the Eldruins, he can always get out, but you can only stay around so long and with that much heavy melee and the Maev trying to walk away, the Arthas pick up again here. Maybe Tempo Storm is on to something. It's Jimmy Rayner picked up for the damage. Do we get the Decker? You know, I was, I was gonna joke when you said Oh, we need some time to break it. Oh, my goodness. Bam! Let's go. You it's said it in. That's why the Arthas looks good. Yeah. He's here. He's back. Not exactly in the form that I thought we would <laughs> see it, but he's finally here. He's made it to North American soil. So excited. I I love it. Okay. We get the Abathur. We know the heels can be there. You get the regrowth from Malfurion and then the Moonfire. You and I talked about this yesterday. I want Adrenal, man. I want to see Illidan at his max potential with Adrenal. Are you with me? I'm I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Uh, the biggest thing the biggest thing we have to talk about was why why the Illidan. I, you, when we saw the Malthale ban, I was talking about what that looks like with an Abathat, how problematic that can be. I've always talked about how Illidan is the laning pressure mismatch problem. When you get him with an Abathar hat on top of the Dahaka, Dahaka never is going to hold his own. It's just going to be the lane constantly being pressured into him. It's going to be very difficult. It's early game. It's OK for the Dahaka. As it moves on, quickly does not look that good. And so it's going to be how much laning pressure can we see that Illidan get out in the early to mid game. It's going to be all the way throughout that game, as I'm expecting it to be a hunt in later on. I'm curious now on how this works. So if you get the tether onto Illidan, he's willing to stay on top of that Maev. Yeah. Lucio provides a constant heal in a, in a burst heal at times. But your main damage source, outside of a Maev Tether, because Maev doesn't put out a lot of damage, is Rainer, which is based around auto attacks, which is where Illidan really excels with that evasion. Interesting, too. We get the Battered Assault pick up there at one. Not going to be going with the traditional stacking on minions for the auto attack damage, which we have seen throughout other parts of the world, like in Twice. Or with the emulation that typically can be picked up for more um, early game macro pressure. Battered Assault thrives usually in the early game skirmishing capabilities because you need to be able to hit two people with your sweeping strikes. It's really good, especially against the high melees that we see from Simplicity, but it is going to pull away with the kind of late game and that scaling pressure that we normally see. Yeah, this started to become more of the norm against heroes that had blind. Because yeah. it's like, well, if you blind out the full duration of your bonus damage, 
it's like, well, this isn't very good. So that's why the added time on that was so crucial. So we see Simplicity just walk right in and take down a tower. But that, that was the first iteration of some of the changes that we saw. Jay, how much damage we've already seen to the front walls here? I think that's a very important thing to know, is how little pressure against Aftercoms we've seen in North America. Yeah. There has been very few teams that have been like, how much damage can we get out against this? Because Aftercoms weak early game, weak lane presence, and things of the like. Simplicity, I'm not kidding when I say that's one of the first signs of like abusing an after composition that I've seen in all of phase two so far. So I'm excited to see this. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. You know, it's very important they keep that up throughout the yeah. entirety of this game, but it's a sign. Yeah, you talk about it a lot. I mean, I play a lot of Abathur, and the minute I see somebody pushing down structures early game, I'm like, guys, I, 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 you have to defend this. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a problem. On the competitive level, it's a whole nother experience. And so I've been waiting to see that. I, I've been agreeing with you this whole time, and I just keep wondering when it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. We're finally seeing that. But as you said, you can't do it once. You can't do it twice. It has to be a constant assault, at least in the early game. And it should be noted that for the first time, we actually saw Zuna push out into lane, and Glorong got the hat and took a trade into him, set him down to 30% and had to tap. That is how this lane is going to be keep going. Every time you see him pushing out, Glorong is going to have a heyday there in the top lane. But we'll see if they can get something else for Simplicity on bottom, knowing that's going to be a mismatch, even so much so that Glau is looking to pick up that sapper camp for them. Not going to be the adrenal, though, Jay Hal. Rip. It's just always kind of fun to see a hero with just an insane power level, that extra attack speed that you could get, but they are not going to be available. Movement speed for days when you look at the Tyrael with the Smite and then the Lucio, if he chooses. Hound Blast going to come out here. We got 25 seconds from the triple author phase, first of the game here. See what the posturing wants to be for these teams as we see Abathur looking to move over to that top right for now. Might be questioning if he wants to pick that up. Keep in mind that there is a brush stock Zuna always available if he does end up making a risky play around one of those. I think that's why you see the Abathur position. Your normal Abathur wants is to position to the right in the bush but that's exactly where Dehaka would go. So your closest point of retreat is actually below. So very heads up positioning by Abathur there, making sure that Dehaka doesn't go in. So that's a very smart heads up play as we have Dehaka using that brush stalker to come in. Does land the drag, Malfurion, he's gonna be first blood. That was a really big play there from Zuna, being able to clutch that out after not getting the maybe interrupt opportunity based on that positioning that Vin had on the Abathur. Well done from Simplicity here, and they gain an early advantage when it comes to the shots, but they got to keep up that macro pressure, not only because of some of the maybe critique that I've been saying about Simplicity towards their compositions, why they've been falling behind in the first two games, but also the Abathur of Tempo in this one. I want to take a look at that top lane. It's something you mentioned on why you would like to see Illidan more so than some of the other heroes is how much pressure he can put onto structures. And we actually see that gate most of the way down and that tower already down because once that kill happened in the bottom, Illidan walked right in, which is why we saw such a heavy Maya focus. So that small damage could add up as the game goes on, something you brought up in the more recent draft breakdowns. Yeah, it's the, it's the purpose of Illidan a lot of the times within these compositions. And it really becomes a problem, Jay Hal, especially on Towers of Doom, whenever you do get that Bell Tower conversion. It can even be on bottom or top because the Abathur will get the split pressure on the opposite side of the battleground, whatever direction you end up going. Well, when the primary damage source is something like a Rainer, we're going to see Reflexive Block picked up by Illidan. So not only having the evasion, but also the block charges. Hosty trying to block damage coming in with some armor of his own, but not enough. Soon as see if he turns around to try and get a drag. Maybe that's on cooldown. That's going to be Tempo Storm. First kill for them. Nice follow-up CC there. It's the first breaking point for the early game pressure. Zuna able to dodge the Howling Blast. Not quite so, actually. Turning around, laying the drag on the cattle. Cattle's just fine now. Four seconds out from these shots. Rainer just spawned, so quite a few time, seconds until he's going to be joining in here for Simplicity. And with that, it's going to be Tempo picking up the shots balancing things down here to 32. My F's on the top camp, and seeing Arthas go up there, I think they were looking to see maybe if they could get there in time to disrupt that. So the response will be here in the bottom. Yule picked up by Abathur. So as much as they confirmed 
did Simplicity that early Fort Tower just seconds into the game, they now have to confirm basically everything, which can compromise your positioning at times. Baron going to go in here onto Hosi. Nice penetrating round, putting him in a distance and not be able to get the gap closer easily there. Saw him kind of leap over for a moment. And Simplicity now makes an out of here. Shehao, we talked about the pressure that the Illidan can put out, but one thing we haven't talked about since seeing him back is if that bell tower conversion does go over, is the distance to safety when it increases, that's what Illidan's best at. And uh, I can't help but feel like we're going to start seeing in that skirmish even. You saw if it, they're at the gates, Illidan suddenly goes, can I get a kill on this? Because just watching them try and retreat from the Illidan is extremely, extremely difficult. Watching an Illidan track you down is, it's it's not fun. <laughs> you do, have, again, you have movement speed from Lucio and Tyrael, but Illidan is going to press Q all day in post 16 when Abathur could give you, you could pick the slow on yours or the movement speed on your carapace, which is the norm. He's coming after you. To put it like, you know, in maybe easier terms, especially for newer fans that haven't been watching competitive heroes from the beginning of time, I put it as uh, Illidan is the original Genji. His mobility, everything of the like, his scariness, his first pick ban worthiness. We'll see if it comes to light throughout this game now as we got the heroics. It is the meta, though, full team fight. I think there was some contemplation on the reverse amp, maybe to do spell damage against that Illidan. But we will get the, the sound barrier. That shot's picked up by Dahaka. Genji now going to pick up top right. This tempo shark around their question for the invade. Jun's still deciding on whether he wants to go Twilight Dream or Tranquility in these fights. I have such a hard time supporting Twilight Dream without the ice block, but I have a hard time supporting Tranquility without the ice block. So you got to walk in and follow your targets right yeah, now. And I just look at this composition here uh, as the pause comes in from Simplicity and, uh, you know, the Lucio, the Tyrael, they're going to be on top of me. I can't run away from this. <laughs> I'm not going to ice block freeze. I look at it and I go, okay, I know sanctification is going to be hard and that they're probably going to be all over me, but I have higher chances of keeping my Illidan alive by Twilight Dreaming one to two targets than I do with my Tranquility likely surviving in the long run, even though every other part of this composition makes me go Sancti or Tranquility would be really good to be able to deal with Sanct in that long sustained fight. It's going to be fun to see when he does lock that in, but we're still waiting for that big team fight to just kind of explode where Illidan can shine. Towers of Doom brings such an interesting dynamic because the choke points are such north to south as they are east to west until those forts start to go down and later in the game, of course, turn into keeps. But that distance that we see, it's really going to be focused when it becomes the, the bottom two sh altars, whether it's one or, or both. That's when we'll see our big team fights. Because right now, everything's just kind of, you do this, I do that. We'll try and get an advantage here. I have Mule on this one, so the advantage you thought you had isn't as much there. And Tempo Storm is starting to whittle away towards the side of Simplicity, getting some of those towers confirmed down. Something that Simplicity is unable to do because of that Mule on the other side. Yeah, and also with the build that we got from Glorong, how they're going to approach this game is not as oppressive towards that offlane. With the Batter Assault pickup at level 1, I probably should have guessed that it was going to be more into the Metamorphosis faster, even though that's not normally what you'd always expect into a Sanctification on the other side. But it's going to put them, they still have really good macro pressure because they have the Abathur and the laning mismatch in favor of the Illidan, but it is going to be more team fight focused and making sure that they can bring that fight on top of uh, Simplicity. And that's based on the fact that they actually don't have any hard crowd control to kill the Illidan. Uh, there is going to be a drag which you can't rely on because he's too squirmy. Isolation, very difficult. Sanctification, interior provide almost nothing. And a lot of it comes down to Maiev, which <laughs> well, Storm got a kill over. That is something that when you see a Tyrael on the other side, think of who's going to lock me down. Another thing to consider with the Twilight Dream versus the Tranquility is if Sanct goes off, Tranquility matches one to one. If Sound Barrier goes off, Tranquility matches one to one. Twilight Dream's the only thing that can make one of those kind of stop from going off. I don't know. It's it's tough. We have almost seen no tw tw Twilight Dream, but this is, I feel like if I've seen a game, this is it to my brain. Jun will keep us waiting a while longer. Right now, things just calm before the storm. It will be the solo altar in the bottom. Barring anything happening before then, that's when we'll get potentially our first big team fight. Right now, Fan moving around. Cat will see if he has the dis dismount. 
Tiger JK providing some healing and some movement speed there. Yeah, he had the Swift Strike still available, but you could see Simplicity trying to see if they could find a way to maybe get a crowd control interrupt onto that before it would come through. Wow. Up on top, the focus is going to be onto him, but he's fine with this. He can take this trade for a little bit. He's got Metamorphosis, so he can buy a little bit of time. That's why Illidan is a problem. <laughs> oh my goodness, and he did not even decide to turn onto that one. Battered Assault, mega value in those type of situations. Being able to hit multiple targets, and Glau walks away. We saw in that Volskaya game, it was the last game. Glau runs like, I just wanted to, I just wanted to play Lost Vikings, so they let him have it. After banning out the Murd in all three games and seeing the Tyrael as a response, that I don't know if that was necessarily the plan coming into today, but it started to become more of a plan. Seems Double like, Arthas. Yeah, all the way across the sky, man. One of the scariest, scariest clones that exists. Getting the default auto attack debuff on a clone allows June to get a nice channel here. It's for the first time, Tempo gaining control in this game. Not only when it comes to experience, but now core HP. Changes coming in. Movement speed now at level 13 for Malfurion, used to be level one. So does allow him, in case he does get tracked down by Simplicity, maybe moves away a little quicker. Lucio and Smite both outpace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zuna coming in, gets the isolation on to Malfurion. Tr Trank not even able to go off there in that window. Zuna now is going to be the focus. Sanctification goes down. Illidan needs to make it out there, but the Warden's Cage actually bringing it back. One more W out, but it's not going to be enough to get the distance needed. Simplicity. Start the fight and quickly end it. Even tracking down. Nice boop out from Tiger JK. Tether back, forcing Cattle into a bad spot. Howling Blast not going to land, but Hosi not having the damage yet. Oh my, that shield might have been enough to save the Arthas there. There was a small health bar beyond that, but I, some of that shield had to have yeah. been taken down. Sappers move up. The lack of mobility from an Arthas and a Malfurion, we're seeing Holy Ground here, which is a very good pickup to lock people in. Some of these chokes just missed out on locking in another target there. Illidan would have to rely on his Sprinter Foe Talent at level four to dive beyond that with his dive. And I think uh, what we saw in that last team fight when we've been talking about the Trank versus the Twilight, whatever the decisions are, um, I think the biggest thing is that that was expected. Tr uh, June knows he's going to be receiving a lot of pressure through this game, but ideally how those fights are going to work is he at least gets, you know, half to three quarters of his Trank, and he's kiting away, distracting Simplicity from not having that Death Ball unit. Uh, and so as long as he can find ways to make that happen, I still think the Tranquility is a value kind of heroic selection from him. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Zuna should have interrupted that. That was a definitely a big my mistake. My F could have autoed that. Anybody could have autoed it, but whatever the case was, somebody should have stopped that. And it delays a lot here for Simplicity, that fact that that Aberthur mine got the interrupt. Now the channel out, Genji clone. See how aggressive they choose to be. Glaurung in retreat. Ben on the clone goes in, taking a lot of damage as Hosty trying to survive. Ben will get him tracked down. Nicely done there by Ben. That will confirm kill number one. Fan trying to confirm kill number two on Tiger JK, but very nicely done there by Ben. Kill him, bro. He's going to go in. It's just going to be a fake there. Get the retreat. Fan questioning if he knows he can take advantage of the lack of gap closer. He's going to get himself a hat, tether back, but I don't know if he's afraid here. Maybe he should be. K1 Pro outplay, drops the B-step, sends a message to an ex-teammate there. Ex-teammates across the board, it feels like here. Cattle once played with K1 and Calf. Glaurung played with K1 and Calf. We went to BlizzCon together on an old roster a few years ago. That's a good point, actually. These two rosters have been kind of intertwined <laughs> quite some bit. Zuna here, he's had some teammates along the way. Yeah, a couple. Town portal open now. Tempo, though, can control when it comes to the HP, and control for the macro for the most part. Mid lane has been very well prepped, looking at that middle bell tower. And it's just going to be, can Simplicity bring that fight the same way they did over the last couple skirmish at a reasonable position here, because they're starting to struggle in HP enough to where it could be a problem. The boss is always a point of contention. We saw it yesterday. As a lethal option, it was a matter of, can we get two towers and then that? There were enough kills to end the game in that fashion.
So here we are with 30 seconds out. Nobody's going to have a too big of sapper pressure or anything macro-wise in favor of one another. Simplicity will have the Dahaka up on top. No major distance to safety problem. Illidan will be able to work away on mid lane and kind of whittle away at that, Jhao. And I feel like Tempo is going to look for a big conversion on mid through this wave prep. Yeah, yeah that. they're already moving in. And now they all in the bell tower back here. That was cheeky. We'll see if they get here in time to interrupt this. Synchronization hey. is actually going to confirm the channel for Tiger JK. So they trade out. That is a long heroic. Yeah, Jhao, that's the only thing stopping that last team fight from being a problem for simplicity. If I'm Tempo Storm, I go, we're sieging up for the equivalent of 82 seconds. Because now I can take any team fight. Illidan can dive past these team fights in a lot of situations, not be worried about a lot of the tools that simplicity does have available. So we'll see what they end up making happen. The one thing that Mule does to initially deny structures going down is that if you don't have enough siege pressure to recapture a structure, it also works in that fashion. So Simplicity might have to commit heavily to retaking this middle bell tower as they've rotated up several members now. The Raider is taking all of those shots, almost falls. But even if this defense is successful by Simplicity, look at what's happening in top. Yeah. It's just over time. Glarong is just constantly moving up, getting more damage out. He'll back out, get the sappers, go back to the lane. Simplicity's got to find a way to stop this. And with that, Temple makes the rotation up. This is almost 100% conversion over the bell tower. Question is, do they get any more on the sappers? I guess with the altar spawning in 20 seconds, it's not 100% anymore because Temple doesn't have to forcefully escort these in. But they could choose so if they would like. Looks like they're going to back away and worry more about these altars. It buys them time and positioning, but also both sapper camps are available in the bottom. Yeah. And that's going to allow them to get directly on those. The rotation of Simplicity slower here. Dahaka does have that global if they come down. Glaurung already making his way diving. Holy ground not in position enough to deny that. Zoon on one side on top of June, forcing out the Tranquility. That was a huge win, though. That was Metamorphosis and the Tranquility. Cattle now kind of gets get caught out as the channel was into picking up by Temple Storm. Vin oh, cattle. got the clone. Cattle trying to kite away. Will we see Maev execute there? K1 Pro goes in, but he doesn't have enough to get the kill, at least not yet. Now he's on an island. His fan has the Dragon Blade out. Vin clone will end up going down. Howling Blast goes through. K1 Pro with the vault, and June throws down the root. Now Glaron has to use that friend or foe. He finds a friend in cattle, and the disengage is there. Zuna landed a clutch drag on there to save Mayep's life. One tower, one altar channeled. Cattle feigning the second. Sappers picked up by Tempo's Storm. The experience very close here. Lane starting to get pushed out. In the meantime, by Abather, King Caffeine and team, they're holding position on the front as Glaurung looking to the flank here, Dread. Cattle. Got to get the retreat here. Falling pretty low. Glarong's going to go ahead and go in. Quickly goes out there trying to distract Simplicity. That's one of the benefits of Illidan due to his mobility. C Tiger starts the channel. Fan gets the interrupt. Abathur Burrow or actually went up towards top to get as much macro pressure as he can up there. That's going to further the race to 20 for Tempo Storm. Fan misses the interrupt. And that's enough to get those shots. Man, if they had gotten that last interrupt by Fan, that would have put them to where top lane would have gotten a lot of value and experience. Cap now possibly caught out. He has to use Aldruins, otherwise he's body blocked to death. And he was trying to see if he could get in position. I think that Aldruins not able to make it over. Sappers that were picked up previously have made their way down to the bottom. Only one remain should be enough to make its way through. But that takes down a huge chunk. Drenat, you mentioned Glaurung on that Illidan can dive in and behind this. He's done just that. And it's allowed for enough damage, especially that mark for death, to go ahead and confirm that. Ward Cage is down. 20 almost here for Tempo Storm as they still continue to remain aggressive as this bell tower about to convert in their favor. And Vin actually set up a really big super wave on top lane and then when he made that burrow up top helping out with his passive he got about 50% of that bell tower by himself in that top lane so well done there Tempo setting up bigger advantages in case this game does extend in the long run. He'll be able to make that macro pressure and simplicity to keep playing ring around the rosy with them as they are doing here in the bottom.
with this bell tower. Illidan and mid again. Marked for death is a great sieging tool. It's one of the best core ending tools you get. Every time you use dive, it gives you that bonus damage onto that. So every time he makes that rotation, it has to warrant a response from Simplicity, knowing that they can't afford to go down multiple. And with that top bell tower already so low, that's a threat. So now Sapper's threatening bottom. The altar spawning in 20 seconds. Another bell tower conversion or two altars plus a boss, it's game over. If Tempo Storm, it's not as likely, but they are in position to start looking to close out this series. And we were talking about how threatening Illidan can be towards the core, but Illidan has the same capabilities when talking about soloing bosses, even with just an Abathur hat. So Tempo has opportunities to set up cheeky plays here. His altars going to be picked up by Simplicity here. Top left, four shots, or three shots, excuse me. Sent back to Tempo. Fan just now making his way up. It looks like Tahaka might brush Stalker in. Instead, he will hold that for now. Look to reconvert that bottom bell tower into Simplicity's favor. It's King Caffeine keeping an eye on the boss. Wow, trying to make sure he could get that kill there. Isn't going to be able to get it. Top bell tower will be converted here in favor of Temple Storm in a couple of seconds. Surprised at how patient Temple was around that last altar phase, but they're in a position to justify it based on how much macro control they have had between the Illidan and Abathur. But this is now a situation where we're going to see a dead even fight, and Simplicity's not too Ooh. far behind in HP. Cap too late. This is the first time I believe I've seen it on the HGC level, but the Sound Barrier upgrade at level 20, normally getting into that second heal, because it's so substantial. But I think if you look at the, the duration of team fights, potentially long, maybe you get an early Sound Barrier out, then you get a Sanctification, you heal up in the meantime, get another Sound Barrier out. It's not the norm. And this might be the first time I've seen it in HGC. It's been so long since we've really had Lucio played. It's been so few and far between. I'm not going to lie, Lucio doesn't always make it to level 20 either. Yeah. Because uh, he's generally on the losing end of things. So it's a unique situation that the adaptation, we will see if that does win out in some of these fights. Simplicity trying to get the conversion of this bottom bell tower. Vin comes out with that clone. Genji clone for that. Deep Zuna missed that sound barrier, by the way. Just out of range, so not able to turn in that fight. It's only going to be back in 22. The mule already there to heal up over this as we got nine seconds out from that altar. Look at this. Simplicity willing to sacrifice some of those sappers down below. That might be able to confirm enough for lethal here as Tempo Storm might start this bottom shot. There goes the sanctification with the Warden's Cage. Cattle's going to get caught out. Metamorphosis comes in after the death of the Illidan. That's a snap isolation from Zuna, and it's enough to almost get the kill, but they don't. Now Glarong is going to be wreaking havoc. Another sound barrier drops there by Tiger JK, hitting five. They end up getting the kill onto Illidan. Might get the kill onto Fan. Swift Strike out in Simplicity. Hold on to this game. Three sappers went through. It's up to Simplicity to reconvert these bell towers before they channel. They now have that opportunity. I'd like to see Zuna stay off of them. They will convert, but Fan goes, gets a drive by on that middle keep. And Zuna then picks up the shots there. That was the time, a very rare situation. That's that double sound barrier. Had to quickly theorize around that, but it worked out in that, especially with the Dragon Becomes Me from Fan, getting those that extension on that. Yeah, I think the sanctification opportunity for Simplicity is a big reason. This as is we game if they, if they get this. Yeah, it is. It's going to be. Nobody's even made their way up. Zuna, or excuse me, June. All Zuna has to do is go out of his way and just drop a root. Oh my gosh. Is this it? Is this, this, this is game. Oh wow. They're on camp. GG. That's game. Tempo Storm takes this series three to zero with a backdoor boss, a front door boss. I don't know what door it was, but it in fact is enough to get those shots on core. Tempo Storm, 3-0 today. Jay Howe, when we talk about Towers of Doom, early game bosses, we often highlight how it's removal of a win condition for yeah. the opponent. And that was a perfect example highlighting about where it's like, wow, we need to get control of this bell tower. We need to get control of this battleground. But that takes a lot of time. And sometimes that time can lead to your opponents just picking up one little boss. I do think there could have been some things done to sniff it out a little bit earlier. But it's just one of those moments where you can see why that is so focused on. Well, they got two kills in that last fight, did Simplicity, and the clone was used. But the clone was used early enough to where we saw the clone come back in time. 
So we saw double Genji onto the boss, allowing them to have enough damage. The recognition was too late. Dahaka came in after it was already captured. There seemed to be a moment where Maev was reconverting the bell tower. That was the closest person there. Tyrael was hearthing. Communication just comes in late there. Yeah. There, there's no escaping that. You can see where the relaxed factor after getting those two kills and the clone going down might alleviate some of that pressure. But as time goes on, those wheels got to start turning on what's next. I think one thing to consider, too, when you expect, like, let's say by the time you identify the boss, one thing that Tempo did really right about that was they opened with the clone. They didn't wait on the clone and give you the hat opportunity and then question with the clone. Because if anybody sniffs it out in that amount of time, they have an opportunity to double Genji, swift strike in, and force a fight while bailing on the boss. But then if you, you know, don't match, then it's all also amplifying the damage output as fast as possible to make that boss the highest probability play. Once the Malfurion gets in range, somebody should have scouted to just make sure nobody sniffed it out and throw out those roots to zone out. But Tempo, clever rotation there. And I feel like a lot of it was based on they didn't expect the Abathur clone to be popped that fast. And by the time they yeah. put two and two together, they're like, it's already too late. Yeah, there's probably that sinking factor in your heart. Like oh, yeah. You go, yeah. this is, it's, it's the moment on Cursed Hollow, I feel like I, every, every team has this, right, where you're like, oh, is this going to come down to a base race, isn't it? And you're like, yeah, it is. And then you go, they got their boss first. And yeah, they, you, and you go, you hear yeah. that ding, and you're like, I still have 20% You're left. like, I got 20%, and you go, that might be game, <laughs> isn't it? And you know there's a way to possibly have it change, but it feels like you're like, ooh, that might be enough. Well, it was enough for Tempo Storm today. We have Cattle Pillar on the line here. Cattle, congrats on uh, that victory. Somewhat anticlimactic there at the end as you sneak in that boss. Yeah. Uh, when we look uh, at the... Uh, go ahead. No, you, you, go yeah. ahead. you go ahead. Oh, So <laughs> with you guys today, you come in simplicity. You're the favorites in this matchup. And it seemed like you were definitely targeting King Caffeine with that Muradin ban. They banned the Diablo, you banned the Muradin. And then we saw the Arthas. Is that more of a stylistic matchup that you had today to just kind of focus on that and take away some of their advantages that they might have through that hero? Uh, we, we just thought it was good in some situations, and we, we felt like it was a relatively strong pick here. And it felt pretty good overall. I don't think it was maybe quite as good as we thought in those situations, but eh, it still did its job. All right, be honest with me. We saw you guys on Volskaya. The last time I talked to you, you said, Glau said, pick me Vikings. This time you got Illidan. Was that Glau saying, give me, give me Illidan? Uh, he didn't even ask this time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just snap locked it. Cause it I, I thought it looked good too, and I think we were very likely going it, but <laughs> that was just like the, I am Illidan here no matter what. It, it was fun to watch, for sure. Uh, congrats. I'm going to send you over to Dread. My only questions here, Cattle, really come down to comms-wise, what it felt like, I guess, at the very end of that game when it came down to the boss itself. Were you guys surprised at the lack of interest on the other end? And what, what do you do to confirm like and test out in those kind of awkward, struggling moments there? Uh, yeah, it was it was really weird. So I think Vin suggested that we try it. And I was like, uh really sketch i was like no and then he clones on like he just clones anyways and he's like oh <laughs> and then just ease the boss and they start doing it and we're like okay i guess we'll try we could still go top for it but then just kind of went for it just willing to give it if they do show up but nobody did yeah nobody there and he, a great job there by being able to get that and i know J how was talking about the illidan a little bit and whether or not glarong you know, it was like, just pick it for me this time. But I, I am curious, you know, do you guys actually believe that he does have a spot? Because I've been sitting up here going, like, I feel like Illidan looks better now than he has in a hot while. Where where does he stand, I guess, within the meta? I, I definitely think he has his spot. I think no matter no matter what the matchups really, he does enable, like, really strong macro play. And then if you can get him in a situation where he's not really too vulnerable to the other team, then you can do a lot of work with him and... Uh, it looked pretty good that game. I think we gave up like a little bit of ground off of some bad pushes bottom, but overall the pick yeah, did its job. And last question I have actually, still sticking to the Illidan, is Adrenal, overla o Adrenal Overload attack speed Illidan with the Abathur dead? Is it always going to be shield build from now on? Or is there any world where you go with the attack speed bonus? I, I think it's just always heal now. The question keeps getting asked. It's like, should we go attack speed now? It's like, attack speed looks good here, and then it always comes down. It's like, I don't know. The healing is too good, and you can't always auto attack like all the time anyway. So you might as well be getting value when you can't, because yeah. Illidan's only only like danger zones or when he can't auto. It's not that he needs to auto even more.
Yeah, no, that's a really good point there. And you broke my heart by letting me know that adrenal ov overload is dead. Uh, but thank you very much for the inside cattle. I'm glad to see that cat behind you got let out. Got let out. It's been sitting back there at that door trying to figure out how do I get out of here. Uh, somebody came by a moment ago. Oh, the cattle, our next matchup is Octalysis versus Heroes Hearth, and you got to experience Octalysis, this new reformed Octalysis. When you look at the mm -hmm. matchup next, are you guys intently watching this with still hopes of getting that? And what do you make of the matchup? Your thoughts on that coming up next? Uh, this next matchup's pretty much impossible to predict. I think Heroes Hearth is still in a pretty good spot there. They're definitely in kind of a rebuilding situation with Arthalon leaving, and that definitely means they need a little more time to adjust. But I, I still think they have the chance to be good enough to to take down Octalus's uh, wild drafts. But it's yeah, it's just a hard play style to play against. Their comps have a really, really easy time staying in the lead once in the lead. So if you make those early mistakes like we did in the series, it's really hard to come back. But if uh, Heroes Hearth manages to stay even with them, then I think they have a chance of taking the series. Well, it seems that there a lot would have to happen for Heroes Hearth to drop out of that number one spot. But losing to Octalysis yeah. would definitely be favorable for you all. We took a look at your yeah. schedule a moment ago, but here's a look at the expanded standings. You guys seem to have gotten through the tough part of your schedule. You have no tomorrow and endemic left. How much focus is focus are you putting on those last two series and then also watching around the league to see if there are those upsets for you guys to get that qualifier? Uh, yeah, at this point, since it's it's kind of out of our hands, uh, our main goal is to just win every match we have from now on 3-0, make sure we get as many wins as possible in so we can, at the very least, secure second seed. If somehow we manage to get first, that that's amazing, but we're definitely just at the spot where we're making sure to focus on our own play and making sure that if we do have to play playoffs, that we're in the best spot we possibly can be as a team. Well, it's going to be fun to watch, and that's going to do it for us today. Congrats on your victory today, and the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, as always, shout-outs to Tempo Storm and all of our sponsors, uh, Red Bull, Twitch, NVIDIA, Overwolf, and Kick-Ass Beef Jerky. Thanks for the continued support. Shout-outs to Twitch chat. Shout-outs to all my subs, uh, The Herd. And shout-outs to Casters. Keep it up. Appreciate it, Cattle. Have a good week. Yeah. You too. Dreadnought, Tempo Storm, they took them down 3-0. Somewhat less dramatic finish than we had hoped for on Towers of Doom, but mission accomplished. And Tempo Storm said they need to just look at getting 3-0s. They accomplished that against Simplicity. Their schedule going forward, no tomorrow. We know the, the power levels there. No tomorrow has been playing tough. They've won one game in every series for their last seven series, I believe. So they're not an easy out and endemic. It's very important for them to get that. We saw that the expanded standings, but it also impacts Simplicity here. That's that's something for, for you and I to look at, and it's something we can look at later. But on both ends there, we see Tempo Storm. We can actually take a look at it now. This is the bottom part, and this is what you and I were talking about earlier. The 3-8 and eight mark, LFM has played one more series. If Simplicity doesn't win their series and they don't pick up games in that, LFM can potentially catch up in that win-loss column in the game record. Yeah, if it's a shutout, for instance, in the next series for Simplicity, that would put it in that position to where it is going to be at the negative 16 mark at the overall plus minus, and that would be enough to fall below LFM. I mean, as we have said, it always comes down to the results of everybody, right? It is relative to the strength of everybody through North America, but maps matter here at this point in time for the Crucible standings. Yeah, the way it works is it's your overall record. If you're tied an overall record, then it comes down to your plus minus. After the plus minus, it goes to your head to head. Beyond that, I don't know. I'm going to ask people at HGC to figure that out for me because right now it's a one to one. That series is dead even. LFM, they've traded wins to have simplicity in LFM. So that's going to be very important in that map score. There's a lot to get into as we get to the later part of this season. But for now, that's going to do it for the series between Tempo Storm and Simplicity. Up next, however, Octalysis will be taking on Heroes Hearth. You do not want to miss that series. We'll be right back. Hook going to miss. Level 16 almost here. Future Vile up again here for Stitches. If he wants to use that as a defensive tool. Oh, the Bless Shield. There's going to be the combo. And nothing to buy there. Yeah, and look at that. They are not done. 
if Tempo Storm gets too aggressive, we might actually see it right here. Dock is coming in. They are coming in for the attack. Isolation used on to Deckard. There's going to be the lockdown. Sanctification as well as the Warden's Cages there. Cattle, he's stuck in the middle. Seven-sided Strike is going to confirm the double. So very well played by Simplicity. Caught here on top. Oh, Zuna. Oh, baby. Can he get the juke? This brush on. Caffeine will be here soon. Or excuse me, uh, Tiger JK will be here in a moment. But that does not matter. A couple seconds longer, and then the whole collapse is going to be there. Now Hosi is about to feel a collapse of Tempo Storm as another setup for another kill here. Take it down with that Frozen Tempest, but Simplicity makes it out of here. How fast did Tiger just smash that Q button? Zuna, he's looking for help. The sanctification's there if they need it. They actually get a tether onto two people. Stay a while and listen was interrupted before, but not this time. Yo, we're going to see Tiger. That's two members down already. Not going to make it there. Look at this. Simplicity willing to sacrifice some of those sappers down below. That might be able to confirm enough more lethal here as Temple Storm. Might start this bottom shot. There it goes, the Sanctification with the Warden's Cage. Cattle's going to get caught out. Metamorphosis comes in after the death of the Odin. That's a snap isolation from Zuna, and it's enough to almost get the kill, but they don't. Now Glorong is going to be wreaking havoc. Another sound barrier drops there by Tiger JK, hitting five. They end up getting the kill onto Illidan. What to do is go out of his way and just drop a root. Oh my gosh. Is this it? Is this, this is game. Oh wow. They're on camp. GG. That's game. Tempo Storm takes this series three to zero with a backdoor boss. A front door boss, I don't know what door it was, but it in fact is enough to get those shots on core.